This lecture is about the linear quadratic problem. The linear quadratic problem is a quite important problem in optimal control. We are going to uh, learn how to design uh, systematically a state feedback, a linear state feedback controller. So the final product of the solving the linear quadratic problem after you apply Pontryagin's principle, you will end up with a linear state feedback, such as we have already studied. The difference is that uh, this method provides a way that first, it will optimize the, the response in a certain sense. Optimality is a little bit uh, an illusion because you, you can, uh, optimality depends on what you define to be optimal. I mentioned that in a previous lecture. But anyway, um, this optimality solution will lead you to a systematic way of obtaining a stabilizing solution. And um, you can use the, this controller on its own, it's useful. But more important than that, you will have uh, a way, a tool, a new tool of designing controllers. And this new tool is the basic tool for more powerful uh, methods that need, for instance, a stabilizing uh, controller to be initialized. And this stabilizing controller can be provided by the linear quadratic problem. So the two important issues is a systematic way of designing state feedback controllers. And the second one is uh, it provides, it is a basic building block or more complicated controllers. So let's see what is this linear quadratic problem. As the name indicates, we are assuming a linear dynamics for the state. We assume that the state is described by the linear state equation, x dot equals to ax plus bu, with some initial condition, x of zero is x zero. And at each time t, u of t, the control, belongs to Rm. So, uh, in this case, we assume that we can have, in general, m inputs, manipulated inputs. So uh, this is a situation in the course in which we are going to consider multivariable control. So in addition to the linear model, we have a quadratic cost functional. And the quadratic cost function is uh, one half, and this one half is not essential. It's just a matter of convenience because we are going to need to compute some derivatives, and when you you differentiate something which is quadratic, you get a multiplication by two that can cancels with this one half. So multiplying a cost functional by a constant a positive constant does not change the cost function because uh, you don't change the position of it changes the cost function but not the value of the argument that optimizes it so we put this one off for convenience what is really important is that you integrate between the initial time zero and the final time capital t which is assumed to be fixed and then we have the Lagrangian is a quadratic function on x and on u. So we have x transposed qx plus u transposed ru. The prime means transposed. And q and r are symmetric matrices. R a positive definite matrix. And uh, q a semi definite positive matrix in general. So what is what is this uh, what is the motivation for this uh, this uh, 
uh, functional. Well, you have two terms. One term related to the state, and this is a kind of, suppose that Q is taken to be the identity. This is the squared norm, the squared Euclidean norm of X. So you are saying that the power of X must be small. You want to minimize, you want to minimize this cost function, you want to minimize the power of X. And the same for the power of U. If R is the identity, you, you get U, the squared norm of U. And you are saying that you want to minimize you. Now, you have uh, two objectives that contradict minimizing the state and minimizing U. So the selection of Q and R, of this Q and R matrices, allow you to decide what is the balance between what is more important between uh, the two objectives of minimizing U and minimizing X minimizing in the sense of minimizing its power. So this is a, a like, uh, like a kind of uh, waterbed effect that you press on the side of U and it grows in the size of X. X. If you press in the size of X, it grows in the size of, size of U, side of U. So um, later, we are going to consider a special case of this cost function in which we just have one input, and so R is a constant, and Q is equal to the identity. Uh, sorry, not the identity, but is equal to uh, a matrix such that this becomes the square of the output. And in that case, you are going to be able to see what happens to the poles of the closed loop system when you change R, which is a scalar. For the moment, let's bear in mind that we have this motivation. So we want to uh, keep X well behaved, not spending too much energy on control. That's the idea. So the Lagrangian is minus one half of the integrand function. Minus Y because I want to minimize X and uh, so my Lagrangian must be have a minus so that then I maximize the Hamiltonian. Okay, let's try to apply the Pontryagin's principle to get the solution for the optimal control problem, for this optimal control problem. Remember that the joint equation is, uh, is written here. So you need uh, the Jacobian matrix Fx and the gradient Lx. Now, what happens? Look at F, F in our case, F in our case is Ax plus Bu. So if you compute the matrix of uh, first derivatives, it's just the matrix that multiplies X because this is a linear one. So the Jacobian matrix is just A. And you put here, instead of Fx, you put an A, this line. Now, what about Lx? Lx, Lx, well, uh, it's the gradient of L with respect to X. The second term does not depend on, on X, it depends only on you explicitly, at least. So when you compute the, partial derivatives with respect to x, this gives you zero. And this is a quadratic form. So this quadratic form has a derivative which is two, that cancels one half, two x transposed q. So the gradient of L with respect to x is minus x transposed q. And you plug it where you have Lx, you plug it here, minus x transposed q. Of course, you can transpose all this equation to get uh, an equation for a column, uh, a column vector. And uh, there is no terminal um, term in the cost, so the terminal term, if you wish, is zero, and the gradient with respect to x is zero. So remember that the terminal condition for lambda is lambda 
the terminal lambda transpose at the terminal point is nothing more than the gradient of the terminal condition. The terminal condition only is zero, so the gradient is zero. So the final condition for lambda is zero. Now let's write the Hamiltonian lambda transpose f plus l. So uh, remember that f is ax plus bu. So lambda transpose f is nothing more than lambda transpose ax plus lambda transpose bu. And l is minus one half x transpose ux minus one half u transpose ru. This is a quadratic function in u. So to compute the optimal control, you compute the gradient of h with respect to u. So <clears throat> your optimal condition is nothing more in this case than computing the gradient of h with respect to u and equating it to zero. And uh, well, this term does not depend on u, so it's, it vanishes when you, you compute the, the, the gradients, the gradient, so the, the partial derivative with respect to u. This term is linear in u, so the derivative is just lambda transpose b. This term does not depend on u, so the derivative is zero, and this term is quadratic in u. So you have minus one half multiplying two u transpose r. And one half cuts with two, so you get just minus u transpose r. And you equate this to zero to have the stationarity condition. Now, if you transpose, this is a, a linear equation in u transpose. If you transpose everything and take into consideration that r is symmetric, then you can solve this equation with respect to u very easily. And the optimal control is the inverse of matrix R times B transpose times lambda. So at this point, what do we have? We have expressed the optimal control as a feedback from the cost state variable. Now, you don't measure the cost state variable. This is a mathematical construction, although it might have some physical interpretations, at least in some cases, but here we don't have a physical basis. So you, you, this is not practical. Of course, you could solve the equation for lambda, but now you have a problem because the equation for lambda depends on you. Let's look at the equation for lambda. The equation for lambda here depends on x and x depends on u and u depends on lambda so you have this vicious cycle and uh, we have the problem of going out of it to compute the optimal u and also the optimal lambda if you wish so let's formalize this a little bit better start with the equation for the plant state x dot equal to ax plus bu and replace replace the u by replace u by its optimal value which is inverse of r b transpose lambda remember we have deduced this formula for the optimal u. Now, remember also the equation for lambda. Now transpose it, and you have this equation. Now, you what you have here is a system of two n equations in two n unknowns, n equations for x, and then equations for lambda. X is imposed, so part of this enlarged state if you wish are imposed at the beginning that's x of zero that you are imposing with the initial conditions and uh, and uh, part of it is imposed at the end that's the cost state which is zero at the terminal condition how can we solve this so-called two-point boundary value problem okay this is a two-point boundary value problem because you are imposing part of the state at the beginning of the optimization interval and part of the state 
the lambda part of the disenlarged state at the end of the optimization interval. The trick to solve this problem is to assume that the cost state is proportional to the state through a matrix P. Let's put a minus here so that in the end we can say that P is positive definite. So this is this minus is just a matter of convenience. And P is something that we don't know. So let's try to find conditions for this matrix P such that the cost state becomes proportional to the state. Now, for this, what is the strategy? Let's eliminate, let's eliminate lambda from these two equations. So where you have lambda, you put minus px. So you have here lambda, so you put minus px, so this becomes minus, and there here a px. So you can put x in evidence, and you get this first equation here, in the end of the slide. And also, here for the equation of lambda dot, you get qx minus a transpose lambda. Lambda is minus px, so this becomes plus a transpose px. And you get this other equation. Now, take again the formula that we are assuming to be true, and we are looking forward to find some p that makes it true. Lambda equals to minus px. Differentiate this equation with respect to time. So on the left, you get lambda dot. And on the right, you get minus the uh, derivative of the product of matrices P and X. So this is the derivative of P times X and plus the derivative uh, the P times the derivative of X. And we have also this minus that makes everything negative. Now, we have an equation for lambda dot. We have an equation for x dot. So let's use these equations. These were the equations that we had just obtained in the previous slide. Use these equations here to express lambda dot and x dot in terms of x and p. So you end up lambda dot is given by this term between curl uh, brackets. And x dot is given by this expression between uh, curl brackets, also times x. Now, everything multiplies by x. So you can write, you can rewrite this equation in this form. Between the square brackets, you have an expression which depends on p dot and p. And of course, on the constant matrices, a, B, R, and Q, but these are constants. And this multiplies by X and it's zero. This product is zero. So for this product to be zero, now you want this to be zero for any state X. For uh, this to be zero for any state X, then the term between square brackets must be zero. So you end up with an equation. You end up with an equation for p dot, which is just equate the term between square brackets to zero. This is the Riccati differential equation. And you have a terminal condition which says that p of capital P is zero. Why? Well, remember, let's go back a little bit. Remember that lambda is minus px. Okay. And uh, from if you apply this condition, if you apply this condition together with the fact that the terminal value of lambda is zero, you know that for cap t equal to capital T minus. P of capital T times X of capital T is zero. 
for this to happen for any uh, x of capital p p of capital t must be zero so it's a kind of uh, using the same argument as we used here to use the equation so what we have we have uh, ordinary differential equation but now the unknown is a matrix well this is probably something new to you but it's not so difficult because you can think that you have here say a system of uh, ordinary differential equations uh, made by equating the components of p and p dot so it's not really nothing much new only the only novelty is that it, it is expressed as a matrix equality and you have a terminal condition for p of t so what is the conclusion of all this suppose that you have a system with linear dynamics and initial condition imposed and you have no constraints on you that is to say at each time t u of t is a vector that can take place in uh, rm where m is the number of inputs. Suppose that you have a quadratic cost defined, defined over some finite horizon. I wrote here infinite, but I, I wanted to have finite horizon. And I assume that Q and R are matrices, they are symmetric matrices, and Q is semi-positive definite and R is uh, positive definite. The solution of this problem is given by a state feedback of X, but the gain varies with time because the gain is given by the inverse of R times B transpose times P. And P satisfies this Riccati differential equation. And this Riccati differential equation as a terminal condition so how can we use this well start by the bottom of the slide and solve this equation for p the Riccati differential equation you don't know how to solve it actually this can be reduced to a uh, linear system of equations you see here it's a quadratic equation because you have a product of p by p here but you can make a change of variables, for instance, and transform it, it into a, a, a system of linear differential equations that you can easily solve. And from the solution of this uh, set of linear differential equations, you get P. There is a problem in the very last, in the very end of, of my book about that. If you are not familiar with that, okay. Uh, think that somehow using a numerical method you get a solution for p now once you get a solution for p you have a table and this table allows you to compute p for any instant of time so from this table at each time t you solve you compute this gain and you multiply the gain by x to get u this is not much practical, but uh, uh, conceptually we can understand it. Now, to go a step further, we are going to uh, consider an example. And the example is uh, concerned with the first order system. So suppose that you have an open loop and stable system, x dot equal to ax, x plus u. And x is a scalar, u is a scalar, the initial value of x is one. And you have a quadratic cost. So in this case, q is equal to one, and your matrix i is just a, a scalar small r, which I assume to be positive. The solution is given by, well, this Riccati equation. As you can see here, the Riccati equation became this uh, equation which is quadratic in p this is a differential equation 
and you can solve it using Simulink, for instance, it's not a problem. The only difficulty is that you have uh, a terminal condition instead of, of an initial condition, but you can use a true, do a trick and make a change of sign of t. So you make a change of uh, variables to have uh, another time t, and you reverse things, and the terminal condition becomes the initial condition. So you can use simulate, or you can use the other method from the last point. Okay. The important thing is that you solve this numerically. Then you compute k, which is one divided by r p in this case. And uh, the optimal control is just minus k times x. So let's see some numerical examples. In this case, I have here graphics for u, for x, and for k, and also for p. And um, in this graphics for u, x, and k, I've considered two values for r. So I have r equal to 0.1 and r equal to 1. And you can see one thing, which is if r is smaller, you don't uh, penalize too much i values of u. So u is higher. You see that uh, u starts here in minus 4. Okay. So the square of u is 16. It's much higher than when you consider r equal to 1. And uh, it's something like, uh, say, 2.2. So 2.2 is about 5, the square of it. So 5 is much smaller than 16. So uh, you have reduced the activity by increasing the control activity or the control action, you have reduced it by increasing R. And uh, the reverse of the situation is that when R is bigger, you have less control action. So it takes more, the axis takes more time to go to zero. And as a reflex of this, when you increase R, when you increase R, you are decreasing the gain. That's why it takes more time to go to zero. Remember, it's an open loop unstable system. And that you have uh, a smaller action in you. Now, the other thing is look at P. I've plotted, well, uh, the, the plot for P in this case was this line that goes like this and then goes to zero. But then I've plotted also different values for p for different horizons for t equal to 4, for t equal to 2, and even for t equal to 0.5. And look what happens. The solution of p is constant most of the time, and then you have a transient in the end. And when you increase the horizon, what happens is that this period in which p is more or less constant increases, is enlarged. So you can think that if the capital T is equal to infinity or very large, then P would be always constant. If P is constant, then K would be also constant and we have a constant feedback. So the idea, the idea is to, instead of considering the uh, differential Riccati equation, or Riccati differential equation, consider an algebraic Riccati equation obtained by forcing the derivative to be zero, because if for a, a very large horizon, uh, P is constant, then the derivative is zero. And the Riccati equation becomes this algebraic equation. And by solving this algebraic equation, you get a constant P. 
So you get a constant K by this formula. And your state feedback is a constant state feedback. So by solving this infinite horizon problem from zero up to infinity, the solution is very simple. It's just a constant state feedback. And uh, how do you compute this constant feedback gain? You compute it using this formula where P depends from the solution of the algebraic Lukács equation. How can we solve it? Well, uh, you can use numerical methods and MATLAB gives you a way of uh, using this. For instance, uh, the function LQR provides a solution of the Riccati equation. Actually, it computes also K. And uh, another way is a pedestrian way, say, is for say a scalar problem or a second order problem you just solve this using the algebraic re relationships okay so one problem is does the Riccati equation has a solution and this is related to the system being well posed. Actually, you, you, you could say, well, if the pair AB is controllable, remember the concept of controllability, then we can find a positive uh, definite solution of the Riccati equation. But actually, we, you can ask something which is weaker. You can only ask that AB is stabilizable. What is the notion of stabiliz stabilizability is this one. This notion is this one. Suppose that you can find a vector of gains f such that a minus bf that corresponds to uh, computing the control by feedback associated to get to the gains f. Suppose that you can find an f such that such that a minus bf has all the eigenvalues in the negative real plane. So you say that the pair AB is stabilizable. This is a little bit weaker than asking it to be controllable. Because imagine that you have a system in which not all the states are controllable, but the non-controllable states, that is to say the states that you cannot influence by the input, are stable. Then you design uh, state feedback that stabilizes the states that are controllable, driving them to zero. And the other ones that are not controllable, they go to zero because that's the way the, the system uh, reacts, evolves. Okay, so this condition of stabi stabilizability is um, weaker and comprises more systems than uh, asking for a b to be controllable so if the system is stabilizable uh, then you can the solution of the algebraic Riccati equation is positive semi-definite at least and corresponds to the limit solution of the Riccati differential equation when t equals x that's the result so how can we use this top for design suppose that we have this system and we want to design the state feedback x1 and x2 are um, our states here and you want to design k1 and k2 that minimize this quadratic cost where q is this matrix and r is just one because you have just one input u here we are giving more importance to state number one than to state number two because we are uh, penalizing the deviations of state number one with respect to zero so but this is just an example of course so write down the state model for the plant using matrix manipulation 
methods using uh, Laplace and manipulation methods, so the definition of state. And you, you have the matrices A and B. Then right now, the algebraic Riccati equation. So this is a general case. Uh, P is symmetric, so P21 is equal to P12, so you save almost half of the unknowns. Assume general values for P. This is A, P A plus A transposed P minus P B. Then uh, R is one, so you have the inverse of R is just one divided by one, which is one. Then you have, sorry, this is not C transposed, it's B transposed. There is a typo there, B transposed. P plus Q, and this is equal to a matrix of zeros. Now, expand everything, or do, do, do all these multiplications, so that, so that you equate the corresponding terms. This term, this term, this term, this term is equal to this term, and so on. So you end up with these three equations. Remember that you have three unknowns, P11, P22 and P12. And uh, actually, you have some squares here. For instance, uh, P12 is verified by 1 and minus 1. But uh, the only positive root, the, the positive root is the only one, only one that drives you to a positive definite matrix P. So, uh, you should compute all the solutions and then take just a positive one. That's the good one that leads to the stability of the system. Later we will see that. So uh, you solve the, that system of equations and you end up with a value of P. And then you can check that this matrix is positive. Remember Sylvester's criterion? You just compute the first element, which is 1.7, it's positive, and then the determinant must be positive. Remember Sylvester's criteria that we have studied in a previous lecture in the beginning of the course. So once you have P, the positive definite solution of the algebraic Riccati equation, then you compute K using this expression. Remember that R is 1. B transpose is just 0, 1. So you have uh, K, and your control is minus KX, so minus 1 times X1 plus 0.76 times, uh, or 0.7, I've expanded there, X2. Okay, And you can check your results with uh, LQR for continuous time. This one also works for discrete time. So you can use the function DLQR for discrete time, which is something that we are not considering here. So, uh, I will stop here for the moment. And uh, let us remember what is the let me let me put this slide what is the most important thing here if you consider a linear system with a quadratic cost then the solution if the horizon is infinite is given by a state feedback a constant state feedback and you can compute the controller gains depending on the solution of uh, matrix equation, algebraic matrix equation known as the algebraic Riccati equation. So you solve this algebraic Riccati equation to get the matrix P, you compute the gains from K, and that's it, that's the optimal control. And actually this can stabilize the system and you can use them even in the multivariable case. 
the next lecture will consider a situation in which instead of having the, this term on x, we have here, we want to minimize the square of the outputs of the plant. And we are going to see some interesting properties. So this is everything for uh, today.